Hello all my fishy friends and welcome back to another Stay Fishy Adventure. Today, we're camping in the rainforest, in the truck, just as the thumbnail says. But before that, we have a really, really fun adventure for the day. We're gonna be hiking, we're gonna be having fun. We've got my man Augie here in the hey. house. Hey, and we're gonna up, go dude? find ourselves the first winter steelhead of the year. Well, yeah. Come hell or high water, we're gonna do that. <laughs> Let's do that. Let's do <laughs> that. Boy. This is gonna be an awesome trip, you guys. I got the lady, I got the dogs, and we're camping in the northern lands, in the rain, and in the woods. So it's gonna be an awesome adventure. Thank you so much for being here. Let's go fishing. Holy moly, that's fishy. Here we are in Steelhead Land, everyone. We've arrived. The conditions are absolutely perfect. Look how beautiful the water is. Somehow we're the only people here. We're in a popular spot, so we're very, very fortunate to have it to ourselves today. It's time to get a line wet and see if there's any steelhead in there. Okay, we're starting off the morning. Small, small and precious. Jig's got a lot of hair on it too, so I'm gonna do a little adjustment here. Gonna get some of this hair off. Make it a little smaller profile. Should work. Looking pretty good. Got this on just a little float, a couple weights. We dialed. One thing I'm definitely gonna do on the end of that as well, though, is Add me a shrimp. Got some coon shrimps here. Probably take a bigger one so that I can use some of the meat off of it. Save that head. And just chunk this in the nice little chunks. Just like so. Tip my jig. Just like so. And we're ready to cast. Okay. First cast of the day. Of the season even. This is the first time I've tried to catch a winter steelhead this year. So feeling good. Feeling spry. What if? What if I caught one the very first cast of the season? Man. That was... Suspenseful. Oh, I just saw one flash. That was definitely a steely. Moved right out of the way of my stuff. Or moved forward. I don't know. I think I'm too deep though. Oh, that was sick, dude. He just went. <laughs> just gave me a little flash of roo. He showed me half a nip. Oh, it's that. What do you think of yourself, Augie? The world saw it. I saw it roll. That was a fish, for sure. That might have been a steelhead. <sighs> might have been a big coho. Maybe. You yeah. saw that red color to yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a lot of times, everybody, when you're when you're fishing out this time of year especially, the, the steelhead are going to be extremely bright. As soon as they move, you're going to see them because they're going to blink so much in the water. That one had a little bit of a red color to it. Um, Nonetheless, I was the first fish hooked, and right before he hooked that, I had one chase my spinner out. So I think things are going to get a little more interesting here. Fishy situation, that's what we call this. Pretty slow start so far. We've only worked the hole with one jig though, but this time of year there's not gonna be a ton of steelhead in here. It's still early December, but there are still there's more steelhead here than just about anywhere else you could fish. So we're gonna keep changing stuff. We're probably only gonna fish two or three different methods per hole and then start bouncing around and, and getting on our Lamborghinis and hiking through this beautiful, beautiful rainforest. So we are in northern Washington, and this area that we're in is actually on reservation land of the Quinault Nation. So Augie's actually the guide out here on the tribal land for us today. So we'll be hitting a lot of spots. We'll be covering some ground and we'll be seeing some beautiful, beautiful stuff. So let's go switch it up, switch up lures, let's go get a fish.
Stinky tea for the win. Stinky tea always gets her done. You can see that's all fish right there, I think. All that dark mass. Yeah. I think that's all dark salmon. Oh, you see what I mean though? Dark, yeah, right where I just landed, right under. Yeah. That's not bottom. Yeah, I see. You can see how they're moving back and forth too. Okay, made it up river a little ways. The river has changed a lot. I mean I'll get fish here before. Hiked a lot of this area and this looks totally different than the way it used to. It's kind of the fun part about steelhead fishing. You're in a beautiful place, beautiful time of year, and it's always different. Doesn't matter how many times you fish somewhere, you go hit it another time, and it's always a little bit different. So, I think we can catch one from the top of this hill. Oh, yeah. I think so. Maybe, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think so. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, here we go. Where's my bobber? Oh my god. I was not paying any attention. Oh my god. That was horrible. I could feel the fish biting, whatever it was. I could feel it biting and I wasn't doing anything. Then I looked over, my bobber was gone. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely not bottom. Son of a gun. Oh. That's a big bump. Oh, what's that? Oh. Nothing in this one, let's find another hole. I don't know what that was. I need to go a little bit deeper on that cast, but I hadn't touched, I know that wasn't bottom. It's it's really deep under this log jam. Me and this log jam, we have a history. We'll do a little flashback footage right now to last time I fish this thing. Got one, I got one, I got one in the logs. That's a big one, that's a big one everybody. That's a big steelhead. And there it is, there it is everyone. An absolute stunner of a fish. Oh, oh, oh. Got him! Got him! Oh, he's got him! God, he lost him. Oh, dang it. That thing was chompy wompiest on that thing for like a good couple of minutes. Did you see that? That was a really dark coho salmon, but still a beautiful fish. First fish of the day. Got on. Here we go. I near killed myself. Jeez, this is pandemonium. Yeah, here we go. I think we found them. We found their number, that's, that's for sure. All right, time to get weird. Let's go log jamming. Okay, so here's what we're doing. We're crawling out on the log jam. As you saw from that previous clip, that before, one time before, actually a couple times before, I actually went out onto this log jam and caught a fish. So I'm gonna try, little, get back here. You're ruining it. I was ruining it. Anyways, I'm gonna get on to this log jam. Try to slip a couple casts in and around it, see if I can't find a fish. I'll fall over one of the two. I don't know, this isn't the same log jam it once was. <laughs> well, only one way to find out. Okay, here we go. We're on the log. We are hog on a log right now. Okay. Okay, well I see about a hundred coho sitting on that side, so I think that's what I'm gonna go for. Seems sturdy enough. Sturdy enough. 
sturdy enough. Not sturdy enough. Wow, there's a lot of salmon right there. Okay. I'm gonna try to do something that's really gonna freak you out. Right there. Got him. I got, oh my god, I already had him. Insta. Insta fish. Here we go. The herd is spooked though. Will you throw me that twitching jig on my bag? Since these are all coho, I'm actually gonna switch to a twitching jig now. Try something a little bit different. These are salmon that are in front of me. I can't actually visually see any steelhead, so I'm switching to a salmon lure. Hopefully we'll get one. All jamming has failed. Yeah, Augie, yeah. what did you get here? First landed fish of the day, and it's not kicking. Oh, <laughs> oh that's oh, so man. bad, it's blue. Little, get out of there. It looks like blue cheese almost. What do you have to say for yourself? That's <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> that is. Wow. Yeah, there it is, trophy catch of the day. That's gross. <laughs> He's got a control, he's got a control. The chum is rogue. That was a rogue chum. I think it's a dangerous animal. Might kill someone. We got one more hole we're gonna try, and then we're gonna have to figure out a plan B. Mm. Mm. That one hurt a little bit in the plums. I don't know what that was. I floated through there once before and didn't get a bobber down, so. Let's see, here's round number two. Oh, yep, definitely not bottom. Damn it. Oh. <laughs> I got ya. <laughs> that was epic. Literally tangled itself in his line. Oh, got him down. What the hell was that? Distraction, see, you just have to stop trying. Augie had a fish literally jump out of the water, tangle up in his bobber, and then take his stuff into the tree, snag him up, flip him the fin, and then sayonara. Oh, what do you got? What do you oh, got? Yeah. What do you got? Steely. That's definitely a steely. Yeah, that's a That's a steely, dude. A Augie's got one, everyone. Augie has one. Little, come here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's a spunky little one. Woo! First fish of the day. Come here. Come here. There it is. Augie. The old one, but it's a one that nonetheless. Missing a fin. Too. An old one, but a one one. A little hatchery summer steelhead. So what happens, you guys, there's a couple different runs of steelhead in these rivers around here. Some of them come in in the winter, some of them come in early in the spring in April, May, and June, and they'll spawn this time of year. The ones that are coming in now will spawn here in about a month or two, but this one has definitely been in the river a little while, but extremely beautiful nonetheless. Way to go, Augs. There you go. Woo! Steelhead. Not the one we're looking for, but it's a fish no less. Got to make the creator for that one. Yeah. <laughs> Little's having a bad day, everybody. First, he rolled in fish. That was his own fault. So he, had, he just got a bath in the very cold river, and now the bugs are attacking him. So, poor little. Let's all be sad for him. He's tiny and he's poor. <laughs> so, we have a plan B. Augie's informed us that here at the hatchery they actually give away some of the fresh fish that come in every day uh, if they're not needed by the hatchery. So, it's a unique situation today. And luckily, because we didn't get a fish, somebody's had the fish for us. Thank you, Augie, and thank you, Tunnel Nation. What we have behind us here is a giant hatchery. And this is how all these fish come back. For those of you who have never seen a hatchery before, this is what it looks like. This is where all the babies are raised. They raise the eggs in these little hatch houses. And uh, it makes these incredible salmon runs that keep the guys busy. It allows people to commercial fish. And to be honest, it keeps the entire economy running around this area. So they put a lot of work into these fish. And it's a blessing that they get this money back. So let's check it out. I don't like this feeling that I keep.
Well, one of them's dinner, that's for sure. I was gonna say, we can take all of the nice sirs to that push one. I bet this one will cut pretty nice. I got somebody already cut the tail. That'll work. Yeah, that'll do the trick. These are all old summers, aren't they? Yeah. That one looks like a summer. That's what it looks like, yeah. Sweet. These are actually summer steelhead that came in this summer. And the thing about a summer steelhead, though, is they don't spawn until like this next March. So they have a lot of fat content. They do really well and they eat really well, even though they're an older fish. So we're going to take two of these males. And you can tell they're a male by how far their maxillary fin goes past their eyeball. See how that passes that right there by that piece, of, that chunk of ice. If you look at the females, they have these little button nose and it doesn't go past their eyeball just like that. So that's a good way of telling. That's two steelheads. Ready for dinner. Man, seeing this place and having these guys donate these fish to their local people really goes to show you how important these hatchery programs are. If with as much pressure as on these rivers, as much as much decimation of habitat, as well as all the commercial harvest in the ocean, there's no way without sustainable practices like this on these reservations and, and state organizations as well that we'd have any fish in the ocean left or in these rivers. So it's a blessing that these things exist blessing these people try so hard and put so much of their life work into making sure that these fish come back so thank you so much Quinnell Nation for having us we can't wait to be back next time been here about 10 minutes and already it's rainforest deep. Tent set up. I love this Yakima tent. You guys have seen me use it in that last video where we were snow camping. It's incredible how warm it stays inside that canvas. So not super worried about being cold tonight. Just need to make sure to have a good change of clothes before we go to bed because we're going to be wet. But time to get the kitchen set up and get this gourmet meal underway. And now it's daylight again. Sorry for tripping you guys out. It was literally dark there for a second, eh boys? Yeah. Now that I can see the light, it's time to cut up some steelies. So once again, this is a summer steelhead. So even though I'm sure a lot of you steelhead connoisseurs out there are going, yeah, I can't believe we're gonna eat that. You won't believe what this meat's gonna look like when we cut it open. Cause this fish still, isn't gonna spawn for a couple more, I mean, at least quite a few more weeks, maybe even months. But here we go, moment of truth. Wham, look at the color of that meat still. Beautiful, that is gonna taste good on the grill. Fish going on to Zesita. Now for seasoning, so I'm gonna go Pretty basic B on this. I'm gonna go with some seasoning salt. A little bit of steakhouse seasoning, which is gonna go really nice with that smoky wood flavor. And this is, again, this fish has a lot of fat content. You can even see the marbling in there. So I'm not gonna do a whole lot to it other than just add some of this seasoning. A little black pepper all over it. Bam. And then I'm gonna do a little trick here. I'm gonna take just make a few nice slices, score it, and I'm going to put a couple of butter slices in there just to add for a little flavor. Those little pieces of butter in between each little gap, score it a little bit. We're going to go a low heat on the grill here because you really want the essence and the flavor of that cedar to come out and that's not going to happen if it starts to burn, it'll start to get like a sour flavor. So we're going to low and slow this, so I got it down on low, got it covered, should only take about 30 minutes or so, but if it does flame up, you want to make sure to have a good old bush beer nearby. It's as cold as a mountain stream and smooth as its name. Okay, now it's time for our sprouts. We 
got our sprouts all diced up. We're not gonna have enough room in the pan for all of them. So next, nice red onion. Then we have some vet potatoes to throw in there, which are really neat. These are actually a native strain of potato that it was uh, actually native of North America before settlers came. So I'm excited to use these in here. I'm gonna dice them up thin, throw them in with the sprouts and the onion, and then I got some secret ingredients to share with you guys. So not really so secret anymore. A little bit of dirt in your potato never hurt. We call it fiber or character, one of the two. Also, what's gonna complement this? Nice healthy stick of butter. And this is just the beginning of the saute part. Okay, quick little check. I can hear the popping and rolling. Oh my God, that smells good. It's not done yet though. Eh, well, I forgot my lid, so a piece of cedar's gonna have to work. But last ingredient on top of the butter, nothing more than some orange juice. And I've used apple juice in this recipe, but the orange juice is definitely the best, so. There we go. Let this all cook off. It's gonna steam all those veggies. It's gonna get it all partially cooked. And then we're gonna eat it. And what I like to do is I like to throw the orange juice in first, and then I'm gonna season once all that stuff cooks off and caramelizes. I'm gonna start adding some seasoning. And it'll really kind of amplify the flavor. I believe that's done. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, you can see this is really nicely done. All that fat's kind of cooked out. We're starting to see some splitting in the flakes of the meat. What I like to do, especially with something like this, I just go right under the heat of the grill and on with our steaks we go. Okay, now for the steak flip. Again, I do not like overcooking any sort of wild game. It's better to have it a tiny, tiny bit rare and then let it kind of rest after you cook it so that that meat will keep cooking by itself rather than get it too hot and like scorch the meat and make it really dry because there's just not a ton of fat on any deer or elk species usually because they're running around trying to survive much like ourselves. Mmm. Potatoes are very nice. Time for our seasonings. Again, just a little bit of a little bit of seasoning salt. Put the black pepper. And we'll go with some steakhouse savory again. Why not? Keep it easy on ourselves. We didn't say this was gonna be hard, we just said it was gonna be gourmet. Okay. Time to take her off. We might as well just keep the trend going. We're just putting it on a piece of cedar. Look at how beautiful that turned out. We better give it a taste because I'm drooling. Whatever marinade he put on that is absolutely phenomenal. Oh, I can't wait to try this all together. Mmm. I can't help myself. Mmm. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's as primitive of a meal as you can get. And nonetheless, it's ready to eat. All right, boys, here's your plates. More pieces of cedar. Thank you. Traditional. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well the night has wound down. Check out our little nook. There's a brookie in my nookie. <laughs> uh, yeah, here it is. New upgrades to the love shack. Pretty cool in here. We've got the little pilot light burning over here. You're not getting too hot with the little buddy. And we have lights, camera, and action. It's gonna be a cozy night. Time to crawl in, get some sleep. Good morning, everybody. Coming to you with a Indiana Jones hat, a hot cup of joe, and a beautiful 
beautiful morning setting. And we are off on another adventure today. It was a wet, cold night, but we stayed nice and warm inside that tent. All in all, this adventure has been an awesome one, and I'm so glad you guys are along for it. In the spirit of adventures, and in the, the name of announcements, so you guys know, at the end of this week, I am leaving for a three-week trip to Southern America, to Chile. For three weeks, three whole weeks in Patagonia, Chile, we're gonna be chasing salmon, some of the biggest in the world. We're gonna be chasing trout. We're gonna be camping, having fun, and seeing a whole new culture and a whole new world together. So be on the lookout for those videos. Let's see what you guys think of that down below in the comments and what you think about what we have coming up. Give me some ideas for these videos I'm gonna make down there. But nonetheless, this one was awesome. Thank you all so much for being here. Until next week, same time, same place. You all stay fishy. We'll see you out there.